Hello everyone, this is lecture 6 of course PE645. In the previous lectures, we have dealt with different types of features, starting from the first order features and ending with the gray level size zoom matrix. All of these features can be used in our pipeline or system that we are going to build aiming to classify between different categories. And as we mentioned in the first lecture, as a recap, a radiomics workflow with artificial intelligence can include five steps. The first will be radiological images, which are segmented automatically or manually to extract the region of interest. And we dealt with that approach during our exploration of the features that we have a 2D image or 3D volume and applying masks to extract the ROIs and then we group to get the region of interest. And based on that region, we are applying the features, calculation, and getting them. And we are doing that process because we don't need to include the outliers or the noise in the rest of the image or include other parts of the image because it may decrease the performance of our system. And we are only focusing on a specific region of the image or the modality. Then we need to extract the features. And that's what we did in the previous couple of lectures, such as extracting the GLCM features, first order features, and size zoom matrix features. We can then apply feature selection and reduction before applying classification or prediction. And then finally, we apply training and validating the model and selecting the optimal one. So before continuing exploring other type of features that can be used in radiology and with radiological images, we need to know how to use the learned features such as first order features to be used in our system for classification. So after that, you will be able to get or gather any data set which is labeled. Some of them can be, for example, benign and some of them can be tumor and say, I need to build a pipeline that can extract features from these records or these images and classify between them using artificial intelligence. So in this lecture, we are going to deal with extracting all of the features that we learned from a data set and use these features in a classification pipeline to perform prediction. So the first step, we need to acquire that data set, which in our case will be COVID-19 radiography database, which is publicly available on Kaggle platform and a link to the data set will be provided. This database contains four categories or classes, viral pneumonia, normal, lung obesity, and COVID-19. And simply, viral pneumonia is an infection in the lungs, which is caused by a virus, and it can lead to inflammation and fluid buildup inside the air sacs, making it harder to breathe. And the symptoms often include cough, fever, and shortness of breath. Viral pneumonia can be seen on a chest X-ray as patchy areas of obesity. Lung obesity refers to any area of a chest X-ray that looks denser than the surrounding tissue. It can be caused by various conditions like infections, which can be bacterial, and other conditions include tumors and fluid buildup. COVID-19 is a viral infection caused by the SARS-CoV-2 virus, and it can cause symptoms ranging from mild to severe symptoms, mild such as fever, cough, and fetish, and severe such as difficulty of breathing and chest pain. On a chest X-ray or CT scan, it often shows as bilateral peripheral ground glass opacities, which are areas of increased density in the lungs, and by leaving COVID-19 virus in the body, it can lead to severe respiratory issues, especially in older adults or those with underlying health conditions. And normal reflects the normal lungs, which are healthy and clear from any mentioned infections or blockages. Normal lungs will appear clean on a chest X-ray without any abnormal shadows or obesities. So we are going to use these four categories and build a system that will be able to predict the category of 
the testing images or any external data. After that, we need to pre-process the images. If you remember, in the used samples, we have only one lever that we applied features on it. But in the lungs, we have two lungs, left and right. So we need to split each of the lungs and perform features extraction on each of them and use these two vector of features in our classification. So simply to split between them, we can depend on getting the contours of the mask. By getting a contour, it will make a contour on that region and another on that region. So now we have two lungs or two contours. To split between them, we can use the x-axis. x-axis starts from zero. So simply, the coordinates with the lower x-axis or x-values will be the right lung. This is the right arm, this is the left arm, so this is the right lung and this is the left lung. Now we have two masks that each of them will be multiplied by the original image to extract the right lung and left lung. And each of them will be used in the feature extraction process. Now we have two lungs that we are going to extract the features from them, such as first order, GLCM, and so on. So this will get a set of features, and this will get another set of features. So the right lung features will be added to the beginning of the table, and for the left will be added at the tail of the table. And for each of them, we have a category or a class that will be added to the end. So each record will contain the features of the two lungs, left and right, and the corresponding category. To do that, we have added all of the function used through the previous couple of lectures, beginning from extracting the first order features and ending with the gray level size zone matrix features. And if you are going to use other upcoming features, you can also add it to this code to extract the features from the images. We have added all of these functions here, as you see, until we ended with the size zone matrix features. And we are adding the 2D version because the data set is a 2D data set. And if you have a 3D data set, you will add the 3D version of the features. And then we defined the data set path, which contains these four classes and we define the classes in a list and you need to define the classes with the correct name because when you download the data set and extract it you will find these classes with these names so we need to copy the same name so when we try to access the folders it can access it successfully after that we defined the input size and the different configurations for the different features such as connectivity for the size zone, D and theta for GLCM and GLRLM, and ignore zeros and apply normalization for all of the features. After that, we created an empty list that will contain all of the features, which later will represent the table. Then we looped on each category or class in the four classes to load the data set. We then got the exact or the absolute path of the category by joining that path to the class. Then we ask it to get all of the files inside the image directory because in each of these folders, there are two folders, images and masks. Images reflect different images as you see here. And the masks are different masks here. Each of them share the same name so we can get all of these files by defining the class path slash images. After that, we are looping on the files and we are doing two things here. You can define a certain number of files, for example, 500. And this is because the data set contains more 42K images for the image and the masks. So if divided by two, we have 21K images and we don't need to waste a lot of time to process all of these images. We are currently capturing only 500 of these files from each category. So we'll have at last 2K images for the four categories. 
and we are using a library called tqdm which is imported here and this library visualize a bar chart to you indicating what is the remaining time what is the elapsed time how many processed images or files in the iteration and for each file we are getting its path and the corresponding mask path loading the images resizing it to avoid any mismatching in the size and confirming that the mask is whether 0 or 255 which represents black and white then we applied the function find the contours to find the contours on the mask and if the contours are not two because some images may contain only one lung and the other is not clear or not segmented or any other issues that can say that we have three or four contours in the image so to avoid all of that we are applying a condition if the length of the contours is not to ignore that image then we are sorting ascendingly the contours based on the x-axis because the bounding rectangle of zero is the x and if we need to access the y it will be of one because this function returns x y width and the height so the first parameter or value is x then the first contour will be the right lung the second contour will be the left lung we created a black image with the same shape of the segmentation and filled it with the left lung to get the left lung mask so we are filling only that contour with white and other regions will remain black and applied bitwise and to get the region of interest the same is done with the right lung now we have two images for each we need to get the grouped version and the corresponding features so we apply the loop on the right and the left lungs extracted grouped ROI to avoid any surrounding black regions and extracted the features first order GLCM GLRLM and size zone matrix features and then we updated our record which is initially set to an empty dictionary with these features and to avoid any duplication in the names because we have two lungs here and each of them returns a dictionary with the same keys we are updating each key to include underscore one or two one for right two for left after completing that loop we are appending the class to the dictionary so each record now will contain the right lung features and the left lung features and the corresponding class we will append that record in our records list which is set here as mentioned to an empty list after that we need to store that list in a table so we are using a package called pandas which is imported here and pandas provide the ability to convert a list of dictionaries to a data frame that can be stored in a table so the data frame got a function called to csv we defined here the name of the file to be stored and finally after completion we print data saved successfully if you execute the code it will start processing each class and print it processing class covid and as i mentioned there is a progress bar here that will start counting the 500 until it reaches the end and then moves to the second class and the third class and so on until it finishes all of the 500s in each category after that it will store it in a table that can be opened with microsoft excel or any applications that can open tables or csv files as you see here we have each feature ended by underscore one for right and if you go and scroll to the right you will find underscore two for the left lung and at the end of the columns you will find the category starts by covid and then normal then numenia and finally lung obesity each of them is 500 so we are ending with 2001 because the first row is counted to be the header so now we have 2k records 
that can be used in our classification pipeline. After extracting the different features, such as GLCM and GLRLM, the next step is to build a machine learning classifier and perform classification. To perform classification, you will need a training set and testing set. The training set will be engaged with the training process as it will work to let the model learn and fit the data. After training the model using the training set, the model is subjected to the testing set where the model is tested for generalization and to check if there is an overfitting or underfitting or the model is fitted. So we have the whole data set and we will take some records for the training as highlighted in this color and some records for testing as highlighted in the greenish color. The portion of splitting between training and testing can be 80% to training and 20 for testing. It can be also 90 for training, 10 for testing and so on. It's based on the number of records in the data set. So if you have a huge data set or large number of records in the data set, for example, 1 million, we can set the portion of testing to be less, for example, 5% or 2%, while the rest will be for training. While if we have a small data set, we can use 80 or 90 for training and 20 and 10 for testing. As you see here, there is performance. So during the training process and testing process, we need to judge that the model is fitted and generalizable. And this can be done using quantitative metrics, which is called performance metrics or evaluation metrics. These metrics will take the true labels and the predictions and extract some metrics such as accuracy, recall, and precision from them. And based on the values resulted from the metrics, we can judge that the model is sensitive to something over another or the model is generalizable and has high performance metrics and so on. Performance metrics are crucial for evaluating the effectiveness and generalization of a classification model. They will help to determine how well the model can differentiate between the different classes and can provide insights into the model's behavior. To be able to extract the different features such as accuracy and precision, as mentioned, we need to build something called a confusion matrix. And a confusion matrix is a tool which is used to evaluate the performance of a classification by summarizing the correct and incorrect predictions in a tabular format. It merges between four factors. They are true positive or TP, true negative or TN, false positive or FP, and false negative or FN. The meaning of each is true positive. These are the cases where the model's prediction matches the actual positive class for example, if we are talking medically, a true positive would be when a patient with a disease is correctly diagnosed as having that disease. And true negative is the opposite of it. These are the cases where the model's prediction matches the actual negative class. Talking medically, a true negative would be when a healthy patient is correctly diagnosed as not having the disease. So we are referring the positive to be having something and the negative not to be having that something. False positive, these are the cases where the model predicts the positive class incorrectly. In our medical system, a false positive would be when a healthy patient is incorrectly diagnosed as having the disease. And false positive is called type 1 error. False negative, these are the cases where the model's prediction predicts the negative class incorrectly. And as an example, a false negative would be when a patient with the disease is incorrectly diagnosed as healthy. And false negative is referred to the type 2 error. So now we know the meaning of the four bars of the confusion matrix. So how to build a confusion matrix? This matrix has a size of n by n, where n refers to the number of classes. So assume if you have two classes, so the matrix will be 2 by 2. Then, 
you need to label the rows and the columns and set which axis of the two axes will refer to the actual while the other will be the prediction so assume that the columns will be the actual while the rows will be the predicted so the next step is to set the classes on each row and column so let's assume that the first column is a positive class or the diseased and the second is the negative class or the healthy and the first row for the predicted is the positive and the second will be the negative so to set the four factors true positive true negative false positive and false negative you can easily translate the meaning of rows and the columns and based on that you can set the value in the correct cell so to translate that cell we say that these are the classes with the actual positive and also predicted to be positive and when the true and predicted are positive or deceased or having that class they will refer to be true positive as we said in our definition and the same with that cell if the actual is negative and the prediction is negative this will be true negative but when the actual is negative and the prediction will be positive this will refer to the false positive so the positive here and negative here refers to the prediction so if we say true positive this means it's predicted positive and the keyword true means there is a match between the actual and the prediction false positive means the prediction is positive and there is a mismatch between the prediction and the actual so for false negative or type 2 error negative mean that there is a prediction of negative and there is a mismatch between the prediction and the actual that's why we said false after setting the four values for the confusion matrix we can obtain different performance measures such as accuracy recall and precision and each of these metrics has a meaning so the accuracy is the overall correctness of the model and it's calculated using this formula by dividing the true positive and the true negative by the summation of all the confusion metrics the precision this is the proportion of positive predictions that are correct so we are dividing the true positive by true positive plus false positive recall which is called also sensitivity or true positive rate this is the ratio between the actual positive that are correctly identified so we are dividing the true positive by true positive and false negative so if we return it to the confusion matrix to understand the recall and precision we said that the recall is the ratio between actual positives that are correctly identified so we'll take the actual positives and these are the correctly identified so we divide the true positive by the summation of that column the specificity or the true negative rate it's the actual negatives that are correctly identified so we divide true negative by true negative and false positive so we take also that column and divide the true negative by the total of these two values false positive and true negative f1 score this is the harmonic mean of precision and the recall which are these this metric provide a single metric that balance between them and this is calculated using 2 multiplied by the ratio of precision multiplied by recall to precision plus recall false positive rate this is the proportion of actual negatives that are incorrectly identified as positive and both of them are similar but instead of taking the true negative we are taking the false positive and if you did the same with false negative rate which refers to the proportion of actual positives that are incorrectly identified as negative it will be similar to the recall but instead of putting TB as a numerator we will set false negative so if you took true positive divided by the column it will be recall and if we took false negative divided by that column it will become false negative rate and the same for the other column another metric is called Matthews correlation coefficient or MCC it refers to the quality of binary classification 
taking into account all four components of the confusion matrix that's why you will see we are combining the different components of the confusion matrix these are also other versions of the confusion matrix as it depends on where you are setting the actual and the predicted so for example in this figure actual in the rows predicted in the columns the same here but it differs on setting also the positive and the negative so if, if you are setting the positive in the first column the true positive will be here and if you are setting the one or the positive in the second column the true positive will be here the same if you swapped between actual and prediction here and here so simply as we mentioned you can translate between the predicted and actual and determine if that cell is correct or not so for example let's take that cell this is the predicted this is the actual so we say that this is deceased or true as an actual and also true as a prediction so if there is a case which is actually deceased and predicted as deceased this will be true positive and if you are talking here the actual is positive and the prediction is negative so we say it's negative and false so it will be false negative because we said the word negative ref refers to the prediction and false refers to that there is a mismatch between the actual and prediction what about if we have multiple classes for example for classes as you see in, in this table the classes are normal benign in situ and invasive and we need to determine the true positive and the true negative and the same for false positive and false negative this will be done by getting the four factors true positive true negative false positive and false negative for each of these classes so the normal will have the four factors benign will have the four factors and so on the confusion matrix would be built based on the actual and the predictions and its size would be n by n and in our case 4 by 4 to determine the four components for the normal class we simply refer to the original confusion matrix which is referred to that figure so as said true positive will be when this class happens in both actual and prediction so when it becomes normal for the prediction and for the actual this field will be true positive so the true positive will be 50 and false positive means we are getting a prediction of being that class which will be that column but it's actually not that class so if you refer to the false positive in the 2 by 2 matrix it can be that class which is positive but actually it's not that class which is negative so in our 4 by 4 matrix it will be the summation of these three values because these three values are predicted to be normal but they are not actually normal for the false negative it's the opposite of false positive which is it's predicted to be not that class while it's actually that class which will be the row. 2 plus 1 plus 2 and the true negative will be any other correct predictions outside that class which is normal which will be the summation of all of these fields let's take another example for the benign class which is here when it's actually benign and correctly predicted to be benign which is 45 this will be true positive for the false positive this means they are predicted as benign but actually they are not benign which will be 2 plus 2 plus 1 and for the false negative they are actually benign but predicted to be otherwise so it will be 3 plus 5 plus 2 and the true negative will be all other fields outside true positive false positive and false negative which will be 50 plus 1 plus 0 plus 1 plus 40 plus 3 plus 2 plus 7 plus 51 and the same happens with other classes now we got four components for each of the classes we have 16 components that we will take them and compute the accuracy precision and so on you have two options you can determine the accuracy of each separate class and you can determine 
the accuracy of the overall system. To determine the accuracy for each class, simply use the four components and put them in the equations and you will get the corresponding metric. So you will get four accuracies. Each reflects a specific class. So you can get the accuracy of the normal class by summing 50 plus 156 divided by the summation of all the components. And the same happens for other classes and other metrics. But if you need an overall accuracy to the system, such as getting the precision of the whole system, regardless what class we are talking about, so we have three options, something called weighted metrics, macro metrics, and micro metrics. Weighted metrics is used to consider the number of instances of each class when computing the overall metric. And this is simply calculating by multiplying the metric for a specific class by its weight. And the weight here will be the number of instances for that class divided by the total number of instances in the dataset. So in weighted metrics, the classes with more instances will have a higher influence on the final metric because it will get the highest weight. Macro metrics will calculate the metric independently of each class and then average the results. And this approach will treat all classes equally regardless of their sizes. So we will sum all of the metrics and divide them by the number of classes. Micrometric, it will aggregate the contributions of all classes to compute the overall metric. And this approach will treat every instance equally irrespective of the class it belongs to. And it's calculated by summing all of the true positives, summing all of the true negative, summing all of the false positive, and summing all of the false negatives and then calculate the required metric. To understand that, let's go to our example. From the four classes, we got the true positive, true negative, false positive, and false negative. And let's compute the recall using macro, micro, and weighted. This is the formula of the recall, true positive divided by true positive and false negative. And for the macro recall, we need to calculate the recall for each of the classes and then divide them by the number of classes. So we'll calculate the recall of the normal, which will be 50 divided by 50 plus five, and the same for others, and then divide them by four. We will get a micro recall of about 86 percentage. For the micro recall, you will sum all of the true positives, which would be 50 plus 45 plus 40 plus 51, divided by the summation of each of the components, true positive and false negative, which would be like that. And then we will get about 86.5 percentage. And for the weighted, we do the same as we did with the macro shown here. But instead of dividing by four, we will multiply each of these recalls by a weight. And that weight will be the number of instances of being normal to the total number of instances. The weight here will be 55 because we will need the number of instances of being normal. And this will be calculated simply by summing the actual row. So this being normal and this is the actual row in our data set. So we will sum that row. 50 plus 2 plus 1 plus 2 will be 55. And for the benign, it will be the second row, and the same for others. And 55 will be divided by the summation of the whole matrix, or simply sum 55 plus 55 plus 50 plus 55, which will reflect also the summation of the whole confusion matrix. So simply sum each of the rows as a separate column, like here, and then sum all of these four values, and to get the weight for the normal, divide that value by that value, and for the benign, that value by that value, and so on for the other two classes. So the weighted recall will be about 86.5. And as you see, the weighted recall, micro recall, and macro recall, they are close in results. This happens because 
The number of instances per class are close to each other. For example, three of these classes contain 55s, while the fourth one is 50, where there is no large gap between a class to another. And that's why the three results are close together, which is about 86. And that case will be called balanced classes. And if the number of instances per class are different and there is a noticeable gap between them, they will be called imbalanced classes. So how to do that programmatically? First, we imported the NumPy library and built a matrix similar to the confusion matrix we made in the example, then convert it to a NumPy array, and simply to calculate the true positive and the three other components, we use that by simply doing that the true positive will be the diagonal 50, 45, 40, 51, and false positive can be computed by simply summing the rows but not the true positive value. So, for example, for the first class, we will sum the rows 3 plus 1 plus 0 and get rid of the 50, and this will be the false positive for the first class. And the same for the second, third, and fourth. And false negative will be the same but for the columns. So it will be 2 plus 1 plus 2 outside the true positive. And the true negative will be the summation of the whole matrix subtracted from the other three components. By doing that, we will get the 16 components, 4 for each class. And then we can calculate macro, micro, and weighted metrics. The macro averaging or macro metrics, simply we calculate the metric for each class and then get the average. And for the micro, we sum each of the components and based on that sum, we calculate the corresponding metric. And for the weighted, we need first to calculate the weights. The weights will be the summation of the actual divided by the total number of samples in the confusion matrix. So we are summing according to axis 1, means we are summing according to the columns. So for the first, it will be the summation, that's the second, third, and fourth. Now we have the weights, then we can calculate the metric for each class, and then multiply by corresponding weights, and then sum all of them. This is a vector, multiplied by a vector, it will get another vector of four values, and then we need to sum all of that to get a single value. After that, we are printing the different metrics for each approach, macro, micro, and weighted. Based on that, we are getting these results. And as you see in the tabular format, the macro, micro, and weighted are close together. As mentioned, we are using balanced classes. So what about if we have imbalanced classes, or in other words, some classes are higher in the number of instances and some others are not. Or there is a gap between some classes and another. For example, the benign class has the highest weight. As you see, there is a gap between the macro and micro. Here and here and here. For precision recall and F1. It's 78 in the macro while it's 82 in the micro. So I want to say that it's useful to use macro and micro or weighted in the scenarios of balanced and imbalanced classes, and which of them would be more significant than the other. Simply, this is a comparison table between micro, macro, and weighted, and the recommendations for each. For example, the micro, it's used for balanced datasets and binary classification. Macro, it's useful for balanced multi-class classification, and weighted would be useful for imbalanced datasets, and it works both with binary and multi-class. So if you have imbalanced dataset, it's better to use the weighted. If you have balanced dataset, you can use macro and micro. It depends on the way you are treating the classes. If you are treating the classes equally, so use macro, otherwise use the micro. After understanding the performance metrics and the train test split, we need to understand another factor. When you are giving the labels and the training set or testing set to the model, the model will need it as numeric values. As you saw in the confusion matrix, we are dealing with numbers. 
0 and 1 and based on that we are calculating true positive true negative and others what about if the labels were words or other values than the numbers then we need to perform a pre-processing step is called label encoding and the label encoding here is a technique which is used to convert categorical data and into numerical format by simply assigning a unique integer to each category and this method is straightforward and efficient for transforming different categorical variables into a format suitable for machine learning algorithms which typically require numerical input and the same for confusion matrix so if you have these three classes you will simply give a unique number for each tall as 0, medium as 1, short as 2 so based on these values we are giving them to the model and the confusion matrix so they can be calculated easily so in that code we are going to combine all of that in a pipeline that takes the extracted features perform training testing split label encoding training the model and testing it and finally producing the confusion matrix and corresponding metrics so simply we built a function called calculate all metrics that will calculate the micro macro and weighted metrics and then returns the results as a dictionary and we will use that function at the end of the code to give it a confusion matrix and get the corresponding metrics first we load the data using the pandas which is imported here by simply providing the path of the extracted features which is represented by this sheet and get ensure that the values are listed and the last column will be the category or the class after that we use the function drop net to drop the null and empty values so if there are any records with missing values they will be dropped to avoid any issues or raise any exceptions then we divided the train test split we set it to 20 for testing and the remaining for training after that we split between the input data and labels which here refers to x and y and simply to do that we get the whole columns as the data except the last one which will be class and we define here the name of the column which will be that name and if this name is different you need to change the label here then we said we need to split by columns so we set the axis to one then we accessed the column class only to be the label so now we have x and y we need to encode the y column because it's not numeric values this can be done using label encoder and the label encoder can be loaded from the pre-processing in the scikit-learn package and by creating an object of the label encoder we can use a function fit transform that accepts the y and returns the encoded y after that we need to split the dataset into training and testing this will be done using train test split this is a function in the model selection module in the scikit-learn package we are passing x and the encoded y we are specifying the test size which is 20 percentage and some sort of randomness and there is something called stratify a stratify here enforces the train test split to split each class with that percentage so instead of splitting the whole dataset randomly into 84 training 24 testing it ensures that for each category that 80 percentage of that category will be for training and the rest or 20 percentage for testing the same for the second the class third and fourth and this is beneficial because if we have some classes that have few records or imbalanced data set it will ensure that the division or the split is equivalent in ratios other reason for example if you have a data set of squares and circles and as you see it's imbalanced because there are 
six records for the squares and two for the circles and I'm telling you to split them you can simply say that this is for training and this is for testing and if you see that the testing and if you see that the testing set will not have samples from the circles and based on that the matrix will be misleading but by setting the stratify option we are telling that get each class individually and split it into training and testing and the same here training and testing so the final split for the training and testing will contain samples from each category corresponding to that ratio so don't forget to use that option especially for imbalanced datasets now we have x train x test y train y test x train x test resulted from the split of x y train y test resulted from the split of y encoded then we need to build the model so we pick the model called random forest there are many other models and this model can be accessed from the ensemble module in the scikit-learn package we have the model object we fit the model by providing x train y train and after the model is fitted we can predict and evaluate the model based on the testing set so we predicted based on the x test now we have the prediction test and we have originally the y test both of them together y test and the prediction test can get the confusion matrix using a function called confusion matrix which is available in the matrix module in the scikit-learn package based on that confusion matrix we can calculate the different metrics and print them we can visualize the confusion matrix into a graph using confusion matrix display which is also available in the matrix module in the scikit-learn package we provide the confusion matrix and the labels and the labels can be accessed from the label encoded we discussed earlier which will be used to convert from string or non-numeric values to numeric values using the attribute classes underscore now we have the graph we plotted it and displayed the plot by executing the code these are the results for the features we extracted from 2k records 500 for each category and these are the corresponding metrics 14k records 2500 for each category and as you see in the results you will see macro micro and weighted and because we have some sort of balanced data set we can notice that the macro micro and weighted are close together so in this lecture we discussed the pipeline and different steps from the data acquisition and extracting the features until the display of the results in the confusion matrix we first acquired the dataset from a resource extracted the features from them and the extracted features are stored in a sheet or a suitable format such as csv or excel sheet and then based on these features we split them into training testing and encoded the y class and passed them to a model for example the random forest trained the model and then evaluated that model based on the testing subset and finally calculated the matrix and visualized the confusion matrix